Hello everyone, I'd like to show you one of the most powerful aspects of the brand new SAP Visual Intelligence product, and that's the ability to create visualizations even off real life messy data sets. It's election season in the US, and so as an example, I thought I'd use polling data on whether voters believe that the country is headed on the right track or not. This is considered uh, an important indicator for the outcome of the voting. So I've taken this data and I've copied and pasted it to a text file. I create a new document and simply grab that text file. It passes it for me and I'm just going to take the first three columns of that field. We can see here we have the date and whether people believe we're on the right direction or wrong track. Uh, so what to notice here, well first it's determined that there are some semantic elements. What does that mean? Well it's decided that these things should be measures, so we can just choose those, enrich them, and it creates the measures automatically based off the data sets. Nice and easy. Now we can see here, though, that the date column is very messy. If I go ahead and immediately try and visualize that information um, by date, we can see that we have pretty much a junk data set. All of these dates are completely wrong order. This chart makes no sense whatsoever. So we have to clean up the data before we can do anything else. Luckily, SAP Visual Intelligence have very powerful tools to get you to do exactly that. So we're going to delete this empty column and open up this sidebar. So if I choose date, first thing I notice here is that I have a bunch of these, you know, RV values throughout the the data, and I think there are some LVs as well. So let's get rid of those. Um, we're going to use the find and replace. So find and replace RV, find and replace LV, and get rid of them. So that's already cleaned things up a little bit. Um, I noticed earlier that I have a blank piece of data here, so I don't want to take that. So I'm going to add a filter here to exclude that value from my analysis. So that cleans things up. Uh, but what I really need to do is extract the at least the month and the year from this value. So I'm going to take the first part of each field, and there's a handy formula to do that. It's called first word, and you can see the little editor here helps me uh, create what I need to do. So I'm going to add the separator and create a new column based off this first one and I'm going to call that one month. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to use the last word, take the last part of the formula, and that one I can call year. So far, so good. So I can go back to my visualization and see what things look like. So here I have um, the data by year. It looks good at first glance, but when I look at the year, it's got 95 to 99 after 0 to 12 because it's only two digits. So let's fix that. Let's put add the extra part to the date, again, using the handy formula language. I can say that if the year is less than something like uh, 20, then I'm going to concatenate. I'm going to put add 20 on the front of it. There we go, and otherwise I will concatenate again, but this time I'll add 19 on the front of it. There we go, and do that. So now I've created what we can call the full year, and you can see the values here look a lot better. So let's see that what that does with our chart. Direct year, put in full year, and get rid of these tools. And so here we have, uh, whoops, let's put year back again. Let's try full year. And here we have a proper chart showing the overall trend properly uh, by year. You can see the overall trend has been positive and then has been, people think, increasing on the wrong track and then maybe a slight positive movement in the last year or so. So uh, now I could have done all of that in Excel, but one of the key things about all this is all of that is being recorded. So if I update my data, it will also be applied to any new data. So if I go back to that polling information and I add in some, a new polling date, so let's say you know, the middle of next year, and let's say 40% of people think it's now going the right direction, 
54, I think it's going the wrong direction, and maybe the uh, same as before, 4 and 2, and then I save that file. Um, I can go back over here and just say data, refresh document data, and you can see it's added the value on. So unlike Excel, it's actually automatically applied all of those complex rules to this new data set and made it very easy for me to access that information. So it's already very powerful. But I can go further. Now let's say I want to merge uh, new information. I could go and add a new data set. So in this case, I'll choose maybe the, uh, the real growth rate that I grabbed also from another website. Add that in. And then I can just choose which column to add. Sorry, let's add another one. Let's add this one instead. There we go. And there, it's found that the match probability on year, full year, is very high. All right, so we can merge that data set. And now I can create a new measure of the US real growth. So let's make a measure on that and add this into my visualization. And we can see here, and you can see here there's a correlation clearly between the, uh, the real growth and whether people think that the country is heading on the right track or not. So let's say I would like to share this visualization then with other people. Uh, again, that's easy to do. I can simply save this visualization and then I can start sharing it to other people in my company. So I can share either the underlying data sets or I can share this either by email or publishing to Streamark, uh, a collaborative decision-making environment. So you can see with a few clicks, I was able to take very messy data, merge it with other data sets, and turn it into something useful. SAP Visual Intelligence is a fantastic tool for people who want to be able to grab information fast and use it to run their business.